Ladies and gents, welcome to the forest. Yes, forest nothing. Uh, trees everywhere, as you probably can see. And uh, we've got a 10 times tech share, 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 blah, 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 blah. shared Civ bonus game. Uh, and we have yes. eight players who are all currently allied. And these eight players are uh, sharing bonuses. And we will talk about these bonuses as we go. The eventual goal is to chop through those trees and then fight for this monument. Again, we'll break it down. We've got some time to chill here. All right. Um, in the red, we have Hud's Mars. Hud's Mars playing as the Britons. In the purple, we have a sensitive boy playing as the Saracens. In the uh, gray, we have Tom Tom, Devious Wizard. In the orange, we have Arbase playing as the Cumans. In the blue, we have Or. Playing as the My uh, Malians. In the teal, we have Stealth R Us. Playing as the Magyars. In the green, we have Cornbread Crusader. Playing as the Berbers. And in the yellow, we have yellow. <clears throat> uh, yellow is uh, playing as the Portuguese. So, um, we'll see how things go here. I am noticing people are already chatting to each other. Even though this isn't technically supposed to be a Diplo game. But let's talk immediately about some of the bonuses that are shared and how this works, right? So the Huns, for example, not having to build houses, that bonus, that is shared to everybody. Um, it is then also shared um, 10 times, which not having to build houses 10 different times doesn't really have an effect, but that's still kind of nice. Actually, wait, don't won't they have like no wood now? Okay, hold on. So we're, what, four minutes? I do just need to check. Okay, this is broken, apparently. Because Huns also start with minus 100 wood, I thought. And that didn't get multiplied by 10 times. So uh, the mod's not perfect. But, uh... Okay, we're, we're going to start... We're going to continue with Huns here and talk about bonuses that would be really nice. So, um... The Huns have cheap Cav Archers, which I believe would make the Cav Archers near free... For everybody in this game. That would be nice. Stable units produce 20% faster. Which multiplying that by 10 times means they'll probably produce nearly instantly. Um, they, Their one unique tech is atheism. Yes. Which makes relic victories and relic golds uh, be much longer. Which has no effect here. And then the other one is you could produce Tarkins from stables. Now, I know you guys might be unexcited about that, but the last time I remember seeing Tarkins in one of these games, they were bonkers. So my thinking is Tarkins, if everyone can make Tarkin, this might be a Tarkin war, okay? So I know you now Tarkant look away. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's just my, my thought, and uh, that was a bad joke, and I'm sorry. Okay, the Cumans can make a second TC in the Feudal Age. I don't think that means you can now make 10 more TCs in Feudal. <laughs> I hope not. That would be insane. Um, but okay, this, so that's a bonus. They also have cheaper stables and archer ranges. And I believe that multiplied by 10 times would basically make stables and archer ranges free here. Um, what else are we working with? Okay, one unique tech step husbandry. Allows you to produce uh, Hussars and Step Lancers faster from stables. So that in combination with the Hun bonus definitely means instant production from stables. At least with Hussars and Step Lancers. Um, and then the other other unique tech is kind of funny. Cuman Mercenaries. And it gives five Kip checks out of every al to every ally's castle. <laughs> Which means you could give 50 Kip checks per castle. <laughs> Dude! Okay, does anyone know if you can go over pop cap with free kip checks? Because that could be kind of nice. It might not let you go over pop cap, though. So we might not see that play a big role. Okay. Ooh, look at what Or has done. Wow, so Or deleted the TC, has a lumber camp, a mill, and two farms. Because the big thing on this map is you need space for farms. So Orr's strategy is to have a lower vill count and stop producing vills and hope to get the food to go up this way. 
Interesting. Uh, okay, Malians have cheaper wood buildings, which means all the wood buildings are probably near free. Dang, so like very cheap buildings this game. Their cav with Farimba gets plus five attack, which will be insane in this. Their infantry inherently has lots of armor, uh, pierce armor specifically, which will benefit everybody. And then the other Malian tech is their TC's fire arrows, even with not garrisoned, which... We'll see if that plays a role, but I kind of doubt it. Okay. Um, Stealth or Russ's Magyars. Cheap scout line with the Magyars. Extra attack upgrades, or, or free attack upgrades with the Magyars. Wait a second. I don't know if we've had... Hmm... So does that mean you get, in Feudal Age, you have plus 10 attack with 10 forgings? I don't remember having Magyars in this before. I mean, technically, it should just eliminate all attack upgrades, which should mean you should do... Uh, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. There's potential for that. Um, okay, hold on. Tom is doing wizard things. And Tom says, uh, Behold, my dear Crusader, for I shall buff you with a powerful spell. <laughs> I cast Quench Thirst. <laughs> and Green goes, I have received a beer. And Tom says, Aren't your lips a bit dry? Your throat a bit rough? Hydrate yourself. Most good, the beer be. <laughs> wow, Tom, thanks. This is some great content here. <laughs> Guys, I have a memory of Tom doing this last time he was in a game. I think it was a regular game, and I remember his eco struggled massively, but now he doesn't really have to do as much. So we'll keep you updated on Tom. I'm sure he's going to speak more, but, uh, you know, he is talking to some people here. Um, okay, so we were still on the Madgars, right? Recurve Botech could be really strong for Cav Archers, adding the extra range and extra attack. Uh, and then I guess Corvinian army, like any unique tech that pretty much just applies to you is, is kind of crappy for this stuff. Corvinian army makes Magyar Hussars not cost gold. That is very unhelpful here, but it is still something. So I think Cav Archers could be super strong because Hun Cav Archers being cheaper and Magyar Cav Archers with Recurve Bow is sick. That could explain, that could really excite the, uh, Tarkins though. And also the Berber guy with Camel Archer. We've got Berbers here. Berbers have cheaper stable units. So it's like Cav is cheap. Stables are cheap. Production is fast. Um, Lots of Cav bonuses. And Cav Archers too seem like they're going to be cheap. Berber Unique Tech 1 means the Camels regenerate. That could benefit the Saracen player a lot. We'll talk about that. That could be all Mamelukes with... Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, so Magrabi camels, and then the other one just makes castles produce faster, which could be helpful, but isn't the craziest thing. Uh, okay, we keep moving to, uh, Yellow here, who did say at the start, T90, I hope you don't get demonetized. Yeah, thank, thanks so much for that. Um, Yellow's Portuguese. Now, all gold units should... With Portuguese, gold units are discounted by 20%. That multiplied by 10 should mean that any gold unit is zero gold now. So every unit is a trash unit combined with the wood savings from certain things like cav archers and buildings. Dude, everything is so cheap here. That's crazy. By the way, blue strategy is working. Blue's going to be in feudal age faster here. Other people are creeping up with the food count. Now, I don't think it gives you it gold back. We've had Portuguese before. I don't recall gold being given to you. Uh, and then we move on to red. Wait, no, we got to do Portuguese unique text. Sorry. Uh, one of the unique texts gives you your gunpowder ballistics and arquebus. And the other one gives your ship's armor, which obviously doesn't help you here. So, um, yeah. Okay, Britons. Now, Britons are a big one in the this game mode because... Their team bonus uh, is their... Or no, their, their team bonus is actually archer range speed or something. I'm wrong. Um, they get extra range on their archers per age. Or uh, God, I can't say things properly. It castle age and then an imp as well. So 
That extra range only applies to foot archers. So there will be some decisions to make on what type of archer you go for. But foot archers should be very strong. Uh, they also have the treb upgrade in Warwolf. Which I'm very excited about. That makes trebs 100% accurate and do a bit of splash damage. So that could be insane. Now blue, by the way, this is the strategy. I'm just going to show it. So blue, look at this. Blue is a pro. I know people are going to think blue is going to be dead. Look what blue did. Went to feudal, built the market, sold wood. Oh, wait, Saracen's market. We haven't gotten there yet. I'm pretty sure Saracen market makes this busted because there's something weird with the rates. Sold the wood for gold, bought stone, sold stone, got gold, sold stone, bought gold. Bought stone, sold gold. He's abusing the market. Guys, look at his gold. Look at the bottom left. Basically, because the rates are all wonk here, he's cheating, bro. Because the rates are all wonk here, you can continue to buy and sell, buy and sell, buy and sell, buy and sell, buy and sell. And now he's sending everyone gold and stone. He's just, he's just slinging everybody. Okay, so here here's the deal. So, a little story time. This is a this is obnoxious. This is egregious. This is horrible. Okay. So there's versions of this, all right, guys? The people who play this regularly know this is broken. Uh and so they have versions where uh this is fixed. And I didn't know what version to pick. So I picked he's st <laughs> he's still doing it. Uh I picked the version that was, uh, you know, that was accessible. Apparently, this version didn't fix this loophole. Um, he is just, he won't stop. So, basically, some versions fix it so you can't buy and sell the same resource and eventually find uh, some type of a benefit, but obviously, he found a benefit. He got a casual 7,400 stone and uh, also has the food to go up to the next stage. Also, you know, will click up here in a second and he's in a good spot now guess what everyone can do what he just did he did give people resources to be a nice guy so i i think it's kind of cool that and funny that someone got into this game and knew that you could do this uh, i never shared this because i didn't want people to do this um and so i salute him at least for passing along some of the resources uh, and people are going to find out later on kind of this strategy, but. Um, okay, so anyways. Uh, did we finish the Britons? Warwolf Treb's really strong. And uh, also Yeo Man adding extra range. So you get extra range on Foot Archers from getting to Castle and Imp, and then you have a tech that adds range. Very strong. Okay. Last one, Saracens. Foot archers do more damage against buildings. So I'm immediately thinking that foot archers can shred buildings in this, which could be fun. Um, that's their uh, one of their bonuses. Obviously, they have the market, which we already saw. Blue is just going to continue to play the same game with the market. And this is, I mean, come on, man. Bro, you could get a million gold this way if you really wanted to. Does he have hotkeys for this? Look how fast it's moving. He must have hotkeys for this. Um, I like how Arbase's Saracen trade bonus is amazing when he has no clue what's actually going on. <laughs> it's, Arbase says that with a normal market usage, but he doesn't know what Blue is doing right now. Um, okay, stay focused here. Saracens also have extra HP on their camels, which could make camels strong. They have counterweights, which affects Trebs and their Siege, which could make the Warwolf and the counterweights Trebuchet combination quite strong. And um, what else am I thinking of? I'm missing one. Oh, don't they have a new one with Monks, which like has some weird radius healing? I don't think that'll be useful here with all the strong archers, but... Okay. He sold zero stone... For 1,970 gold. Capture Age is confused. Capture Age is very confused. Um, Alright, and then we have... Uh, did we talk about Huns? We did. Okay. So here's where uh, anyone who's getting disappointed with Blue's dominance... 
needn't, needn't not worry, okay? And I'm going to explain why. The rules are in this game is that no one can fight each other until everyone is an imp and everyone has researched both their unique decks. Because in order for everything to share, they have to have researched the text. Then it becomes a free-for-all, and they will all switch uh, and fight against each other, okay? So so that is... It's not like Blue is going to stomp everybody here. We do see TC number two for Blue and Feudal. That's because of the Cumans. So Blue is going to create lots of vills now and probably pull ahead... Blue is a pro at this. There are there are like dedicated people who play this every night. Uh, you want to know how I found out about the Saracen one though, guys? You want a little story time? Because I've got a story or two in me. You better be ready for it. So uh, let's see. It was last July. I organized a... I say I organized. I, I didn't actually do a lot of the organization. But uh, in the US, we did a moderator meetup. For a lot of my longtime mods and we had i think like six or seven of us uh at uh at a place in philly and people brought pcs and we we hung out we had age of empires on the tv and we played age of empires simultaneously uh all while of course drinking and having a good time and so at one point four of us or i think like five or six of us joined a lobby hosted by now one of my mods, WDW Kit. I don't know, WDW Kit, are you here? Anyways, so we we recognize this guy from Community Games. We see he's hosting a ten times shared sip bonus lobby, and we joined it. Yay. And he was Saracens, or at least Saracens was in the game. And I was just like, how? I asked him afterwards, how did you have that many resources so fast? And he told me, yep, some of the versions are bugged. And so I took advantage of that. So he's a bug abuser. Blue's telling people now. Because Grace says, wait, Blue, why is your score 5k? And Blue says, if you buy and sell the same thing all the time, you get free gold. So yeah, I bet you everyone's going to try that now. Green's making a market. Red's making a TC. Purple's got a market. Let's see, are they doing it? What's this capture age say? Yeah, it looks like our base is immediately taking advantage of that. But this is insane. What Blue is doing is just on another level here. Uh, let's see. What's the resources at now? Oh, yeah. It actually capture age. Oh, God. We're going to break capture age. Everybody's doing it. Everybody's doing the same thing now. So not only are things going to be cheap, guys, but everyone is going to have endless resources, essentially, because of the market. <laughs> Okay, I hope you understand, but I'm going to have to remove the notifications before something crashes, okay? They have found out the free money hack. The free money hack has been found. Somebody called Spiffing Brit, but we need... Hyperinflation is not okay. We we. What I suggest is we just don't look at the problems our economy is having, and we just forget about it. Sweep it under the rug. Okay. <laughs> Tom says... Tom says... I cast fast fingers. <laughs> uh, our base says, I knew I shouldn't have taken out my market hotkeys. Okay. So you guys want to hear another story? This one's a little bit more wholesome. It's not, I mean, so much as interesting. So, so uh, live viewers, if you wouldn't mind, could you share with me your age? Now, I don't mean your emotional age, as some of you guys are going to say, you know, like eight. But no, your your age, right? How old are you watching me right now? Okay, so I'm seeing a lot. Uh, the youngest one I noticed so far was 19. That was the youngest I've noticed. Someone did say negative two. So that's interesting. Um, okay, but I would say the data that I have suggests the majority, not all, the majority are between the age of like 21 and 45. Okay, that's a pretty big range. I would say just on the top of my head that that is maybe something like um, 80% of my audience, okay? Now you do have exceptions to that, right? And I, I've met some of those exceptions at meetups. Um, for example, we had this, for Hidden Cup, we had a 
the first USA viewing party, right? And uh, I met someone who introduced himself. He said, I'm the oldest one here. He was like 67 or 68 or something. I was like, this is badass. This is so cool, right? What I wasn't expecting, though, is I wasn't expecting some of the younger fans at the viewing party, right? This is an in-person viewing party. And um, first one I've ever done. And we had people, uh, you know, we had like a 12-year-old who's apparently like 1,100 ELO. And he showed up and... He was there, his, his family was at Disney, and uh, they made a drive over because it was like three hours away from their family vacation. He was like fanboying super hard. He was like super starstruck to meet me. Next to him was his brother, and I asked him, I was like, do you play Age of Empires? And he was like, no, and his brother did not seem to think I was important at all and didn't give a crap, which is hilarious. But anyways, so I was like, wow, 12, right? That's That's amazing, I didn't really know that, you know? Because I'm always thinking, like, maybe my audience has kids that are in the room. Not necessarily, like, watching, right? So, uh, as Blue has, has gone up to 203,000 gold with this trick, by the way. There was a girl. I don't know her exact age. I want to say she was five years old. She was at that viewing party. She had a shirt that had all the Civ icons on it. And she came up to me. She was so spooked and so scared, right? That's a big deal, right? And I'm also, like, a rather big dude. Waited in line, came up, and she mustered up the courage to tell me that 10 times tech is her favorite. She said 10 times, she's like, I love... She came up, and she's looking at the ground. And she's just like, I really like your 10 times tech videos. They're my favorite. Meanwhile, I'm like, crap, I haven't uploaded one of those things in, like, five months. I felt so bad. I was like, ah, this whole hidden cup thing took away from what she enjoys. Who am I? You know, and now we're back to it. But um, I just thought it was so cool, you know. So I wanted to give her a shout out. I don't remember her name at all. Um, but it was, you know, it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure to, to meet her. And her dad was super chill. And it was super cool that she, she was there. And she's just a genuine fan of the channel and the game, you know. So, um, yeah, just casting 10 times tech made me think of that. It was a really uh, cool experience to get to meet so many people, but just, like, such a wide variety. Like, I looked in that room. I was just like, how cool is it that people from all these different areas, all these different places, all these different age groups are all here and found, like, something to bring them together? Because you would not have people from... Like, you are you wouldn't have someone from the age of 5 to 68, someone from Uruguay, someone from Colombia, people from Germany, people from Canada, and then people from the U.S. in the same room, all there together, understanding what's going on. So it was super cool. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so story time's over. Anyways. So, Blue is uh, already on Siege Onager, and poor Stealth R Us is in Feudal Age. <laughs> um... Let's see who who realized the trick here. Let's see what's the what are the market rates? What are they looking like? Okay, sensitive boy and HUDs realized. By the way, yellow. I hope you feel a little bit bad after my story. So I'm saying, okay, yeah. So these guys are using the market trick, basically the infinite resource hack. All right, so I'm gonna remove that now because that's gonna be nonstop. Um. But eventually, we're going to see unique text come in here. And eventually, the countdown will begin at the monument, which, of course, is the eventual goal. So. I think Red's resources... That's a good question. Why does Red, like, have no resources despite using the market all the time? Looks like Red... It looks like everybody else has got, like, nothing. Are the prices affected? Doesn't seem like the prices have gone up to buy things. Uh, T90, I recall watching one of these games and Portuguese Feitoria was broken. Oh, I forgot about the Feitoria. The Feitoria might actually be easier too because you don't have to buy and sell things nonstop from the market. Hmm. Yeah, look. You just look at the look at the resource panel and you can tell what's happening. Look at to look at Tom Toms. So basically, if you just continue to buy and sell the same resource, your resource should go up higher and higher over time, I think. 
Phaetoria's bring in resources 10 times faster than they normally do, which makes it really fast. Uh, and then that in combination with units not costing gold in the first place basically means that you can make anything you need with just one Phaetoria. So again, like the crazy situation of having all this gold, this is in a game where the majority of units are not going to cost gold. So it's just a funny, kind of a funny side note, I would say. Yeah, I hope we see some trebs. I want to see Britain trebs in combination with with uh, the Warwolf and Counterweights technology. I'd like to see stack. But okay, guys, if you had to pick a unit right now that is going to be the go-to unit, what would you pick? If you couldn't tech switch, you had to pick one unit to win this game, what do you pick? Okay, someone said organ guns. Tarkin, Siege Onager, Arbalest. Someone said Flaming Camels. We, we won't have those. There's no Tatars. Sorry. Skirmishers. Hmm. I think it's got to be... I I'm going with the unit produced out of the stable, personally. Um, I think... I think Tarkin... But it's just because there's this memory of Tarkins being ridiculous in this mode. Tarkin will produce instantly. Uh, it'll have a lot of extra attack because of Malians. Mm. And when you go from standard to elite with a Tarkin, so I think a normal Tarkin is like 130 HP and elite is like 180. And so in Instead of like plus 50, it should be plus 500, which is quite a jump. Hmm, I don't know. Magyar Hussar could be strong too. I can also see an argument for Cav Archers. Or just like Foot Archers as well because of Britons and Saracens. We don't really have many Siege bonuses at play for Siege Onagers or like Scorpions. Like sometimes Scorpions could be st really strong in these settings, so... We'll see. We'll find out, guys. I like the fact that we don't all agree on one particular thing and we get to find out. This is why I do random sieve and this is why we, we do it the way we do it, so. Beglord, uh, thank you very much, says, T90, could you please turn on an even bigger tree mod? I can see some... I can see something, lol, JK. <laughs> so, Feglord, there is a, a mod called the Gigantic Tree Mod, which makes trees like six times bigger than the trees you were looking at and i tried it when i was streaming on facebook and everyone's stream was lagging they couldn't watch so i i'm tempted to like try a video with it but i think it's so intensive for people to load they couldn't even watch the stream i could stream it it looked fine on my end but for whatever reason people actually couldn't watch it so I thought that was pretty wild. The trees were like, each tree was the size of this castle, it felt like. Like, imagine one tree being that height of that castle. And then, of course, this the, the stump is thicker. And then the branches have a wider spread, so. Hmm. Yellow, go to Imp. We will get Fatoria. And Yellow says, I'm trying. And Blue with 226 gold bossing people around here says do you need resources and yellow says i need space grace says food is more expensive than in venezuela <laughs> sorry to my venezuelan audience <laughs> if there is a venezuelan audience i will come cut you out says red so red's gonna give yellow space and is kind of asking for permission okay all right. The Council of Wizards must stop their money printing spells. <laughs> Yo, I love Gray. <laughs> I I love Gray so much, man. I forget what community game he was in before, but it was definitely one. I think he was too busy casting spells on people and he got killed. <laughs> But I, if I were to rig people in, I would definitely rig Gray in more frequently. It's so funny. 
<laughs> Especially because his name is so, like, themed, but not at the same time. Like, what type of devious wizard is named Tom Tom? Oh, no, the devious wizard is here. Oh, really? What do they call him? Tom Tom. Like, <laughs> it does not sound devious at all. All right, so they have to research their unique techs, and then once everyone has researched their unique techs, they all agree to turn on each other, and this is a massive free-for-all fight to the death. But honestly, like, some of these guys might be an imp soon, but they barely are ready for fighting. That's kind of the tricky thing. Blue is just... At least he told everybody else. Okay, watch, watch Tom Tom's resources um well i saw his stone and gold going up yes there's actually a book series the black company that has a wizard named tom tom oh so it's a reference okay i didn't know that sorry i don't i don't read books anytime you think wow t90 must not have lived a life it's just because i've spent all of my time doing this so, who I am, my my being, the person you use for entertainment, uh, is because of my lack of knowledge elsewhere, so. This is nice from Red. I mean, Yellow did say he needed space, and Red just says space. Okay. Hmm. Elysium, don't even. Can we please compliment Green for these farms? Unironically, not a farm joke. This is actually amazing how he's been able to fit so many farms here. It bothers me he's missing one here, but it is very satisfying. Beyond that gap, it's pretty much perfect. Oh wow, Yellow just made it to Castle Age. And Yellow's making Tarkins, which have plus 52 attack, by the way. So I think that is Farimba then, right? I would laugh if yellow just kills red right now with Castle Age Tarkins. I, actually, that's against the rules. I would not laugh at rule breaking. <laughs> I just missed this. I'm so sad I missed it. Red said space when he was cutting space. <laughs> and the arm bases looks like Earth to me. And our bases, I'm happy one person laughed at that. Oh, I can relate to that. Hmm. Okay, so... Uh, guys, what would you say some of the more iconic sounds from Age of Empires to Conquerors? Like, think back in the day. You know, you think of units before all this Definitive Edition. Think of the your favorite units. Think of your favorite attack sounds. Anything come to mind? Jaguar Warrior? Okay. Classic. That's good. I like that. I'm seeing a lot of people saying thump. Are you implying to me that the Tarkins on one of the most classic civs this game has ever had, being one of the most classic units this game has ever seen, had a thump when they attacked? Like, they actually made a noise? And five years after the release of the Definitive Edition, they don't have it in the Definitive Edition? Are you saying... that? There's no way, yes. right? The Tarkin? Huh, interesting. You know, I would have never thought of that, personally. That's not something that bothers me, personally. Alright, good to know. Just, just polling the audience. I wasn't swaying you guys at all by showing the Tarkin. <laughs> uh, guys, uh, you know, you have freedom of choice and thought and everything, but tell me what unit you're thinking of. Uh, tell me, please, you know. Blue is ready to go. Well, what is this? Oh my god, Blue has made a scenario to test all the stats! Okay, well here we have a Pikeman with 34 Pierce Armor. Here we have a Gabetto with 40 base attack. Well, how's it have 40 base attack? Is that- that might just be the Elite Gabetto- from regular Gabetto to Elite. Camel is 7 plus 52. Oh, the Gabetto also has 15 range. That's interesting. Genitor? Uh, okay, 14 plus 13 attack. Quite a bit of range there. Skirmisher doesn't look like it's that exciting. Cavalier, of course, has the extra attack. Cav Archer. 
Now, this is a sieve that doesn't get Bracer, but it does get plus 13 because of Recurve Bow. And some extra range. Gunpowder, there's really no bonuses at play except for Archibus, which gives means they um, have Ballistics. And then there's an Arbalest, which has plus 32 range. So the rangy boys are still the Foot Archers. And I can see why people wanted to go for Foot Archers, but... I, I think Tarkins? Like, what's the HP on these? Okay, so the regular Tarkins. Oh my god, he's making the free Kip checks! Ooh. Crazy. Ooh, the Camels have 440 HP because of the Saracen bonus. Gray says, forgive me for what I must yabba dabba do. And Blue is telling everyone to make a Fatoria, which everyone should do. I, it, there's something wrong here. The Britain player is making Cav Archers. That does not make me happy. But yeah, Fatoria should bring in insane amounts of resources, and then you don't need to use the market anymore. But we still have some players who aren't exactly ready, who don't have a castle, who haven't researched unique techs yet. So... But the cumin player must have researched cumin mercenaries. Wait, what happens if you research that and someone hasn't built a castle yet? Does that mean that they they don't get it when they build their own castle? I think they have to have the castle up when you research it. And if that's the case, there's a couple players here who are not going to have them. Whoa, 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 whoa. Look at the movement speed. What's happening? Wait, why are they so fast? Oh, the cumin stable unit speed! Oh! Cumin cav moves faster in each age. And that applies to cav archer units too. We forgot about that. Ooh, I'm also ready for the trebs. Wait, or was he using the trebs to kill those? No, he didn't use the trebs to kill those. I guess he didn't want those units. Remember, the units are basically free. Oh, that was a treb shot. Oh, boy. Oh, that's going to be fun. Okay, so you definitely need to incorporate trebuchets into your army. Oh, <laughs> baby. Oh, no. What are you doing? Careful. Careful with your fast units. Okay. I still think Tarkin's going to be insane when they're elite. We'll see if someone ever gets Elite Tarkin. I don't think Blue realized he can make Tarkins with all this testing. Anyone have Elite Tarkin? Okay, so they're talking about getting the text. They're about to move. A lot of people making Genitors, which is a mounted skirm. We'll see if that's good enough against the Cav Archers and the Archers out there. I Purple, a sensitive boy is still too sensitive. Isn't ready yet. Gray is, is maybe going to build up and get them now. Uh-oh. Uh, red, 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 red. Careful, careful, careful. Credit to our base, making sure everyone has their techs. Our base typing out Yellow's full name. Classic. I don't know if Yellow is prepared yet. Yellow has had the castle for a while. This, of course, means... They can enemy each other and go to town. Uh, Gray almost has a million gold, by the way, with the market abuse. And that is why Gray has not advanced much with anything else. To be fair, though, Huns don't get onagers, so they can't cut the trees like this, like the other civs can. But if you make one treb, it could be good. Also, don't Hun trebuchets... Hun trebuchets have, like, 50% more accuracy or something, which we forgot about. How many subs to say Yellow's name? I... Next topic. Green is... Listen, I'm gonna say this, Ducks. Earlier today, I looked at the second edition of the T90 sound mod, okay? And there were words and phrases taken completely out of context, which were added to the T90 sound mod update, okay? And I am... I was reminded in that moment the power of clippage on the internet 
And so I am not going to say Yellow's name. Okay. Um, purple has not responded yet. I think Gray was asking if Purple's onager is friendly. And seems to be worried about that. I still haven't seen Elite Tarkin yet. No one's upgraded to Elite. Is this Elite? Oh my god, Tarkins are busted. 38 plus 54 attack. And then how much Pierce Armor? Well, that's only 15 Pierce Armor. It's actually not that crazy. Uh, Red. Oh, God. Okay. Okay. Is this cheating? I think Red is cheating. They're, are they supposed to fight now? Oh, God. The Trebs are destroying all the Tarkins. Oh, think of the Tarkins. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Red says, whoops, sorry. Yeah, that's a big oops right there, dude. You act like you just accidentally, like, misclicked and and weakened a unit. You just massacred 50, <laughs> 50 Darkens. I like how blue is propping up the weak links here, sending resources over to purple now. I think everyone's made a Fatoria. You need to have a Fatoria. And then your resources will skyrocket. You guys want to see something wild? Look at blue's market usage right now. Look at this. Look at this. Look at the numbers. This guy's playing billionaire simulator. Look at this. Oh, and now... Oh, it's bugged. Beca because they're all allied and the countdown started. Uh... Okay. So, there's a countdown for every single player. This isn't supposed to be... It's okay that they start the countdown, but at a certain point, they all have to, to turn enemy to each other. Those are the rules. We have time to wait. I'm just waiting for Red to have another oops, sorry moment here. Remember, just because Red is Britain's doesn't mean that his trebs are better than everyone else's. All the bonuses are shared. So Yellow could be making trebs too. Everyone should be making some trebuchets, I would say. All hell is going to break loose. I'm curious to see how things play out. But green currently has started the countdown anyways. Wow, guys, look at the count. Look at the damage the Trebs apparently do. 200 plus 303. What? That's because of counterweights, I guess. Okay, I gotta remove the market events. I Gray has gone into the millions of gold. And now he's down to below 100k. And now he's up above 2 million gold. And he's he's yes. gonna go back down again. Great! Make space for yourself with a treb. Stop using the market, bro. Look at the resources. Bottom left. He's gonna come right back in. And 3 million gold. <laughs> Don't th stop doing it! What do you need 300 gold for? Nothing costs gold in this game. Gray. <laughs> uh, nothing costs gold in this gray in this game. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, so I think they're all turning now. Oh god. Okay, just sorry for the spam. There's a lot happening. But I think everyone's turning. Uh, some people haven't gotten the memo. Oh, man. Look away, kids. Oh. If I wish I could turn off these notifications for a second. But this is what happens when we do it this way. They will disappear on us. And we've got a fight between yellow and a fight between red. But yellow hasn't actually turned on red. That's the problem. The Tarkins are still insane. The Tarkins will win this the second yellow turns. Yellow spent too much time Googling how to have a username that makes T90 cringe instead of realizing how to do the Diplo settings. Yellow, please. Enemy, the settings are at the top right and oh my God, yellow just vroom, just finally realized and say goodbye to red. You remember red? Cause I don't, red's gonna be gone. Yellow's got half a base, but just needs a couple stables and this is insane. The Tarkins are unbelievable, and still no thump, by the way. 
It's just it's just silence. So like we said, high HP, good enough pierce armor, and tons of attack with Elite Tarkin. And Red needs to make a tech switch fast. I don't think Red was expecting this. And Red is actually, uh, in all fairness, fighting in the middle as well against Genitors. And the Genitors seem to be doing a really good job. Over here, we've got Tarkins and Camels and Gabetto. That seems deadly. Gray has <laughs> 50 Trebs. <laughs> this this seems like Gray. Purple's still hiding. But Red is getting destroyed from both sides. Still going with Cab Archers. So thinking the recurve bow upgrade could be strong here, but I think the lack of HP is the problem. The Tarkins one shot a Cab Archer because the Tarkins have more than 60 attack. So, considering how fast the Tarkins are. And then they also have bonuses against buildings. Yeah, red is gone. Red is gone. Goodbye, red. GG. GG to you. What if yellow says, oops, misclick, just to get back at him here? Sorry, bro. Didn't mean to. Misclick. Okay, a couple speedy paladinos go this way. We haven't actually seen many paladins. Uh, they still have 180 HP. They do have the plus 54 attack like the Tarkin does, but they lack the pierce armor of the Tarkin. And Tarkins have 600 HP, like we said. I mean... <laughs> Red, Red's units just disappear. <laughs> Tarkins are unbelievable in 10 times tech. Oh, man. I, I, I honestly, I think camels are going to be needed to deal with these. I'm curious how that goes. Because the camels have 500 HP and a lot of attack. Gray doesn't get Onager, remember. Huns are kind of a tricky sieve for this map. Orange took the middle at one point. Uh, we do have an engagement here. And right now, it seems like green is very intent on just making genitors. I want to see camel archers, too. I want to know their stats. Do you see that? That's a hundred units struggling to kill one. I think that the reason Tarkins have more HP is because of the HP boost from standard to elite. Because I think it's a 60 HP increase. And that 60 HP increase is increased, or it might be like 50, is increased by 10, which would get you to the 620 base HP. Yeah, so I think it's like. I think that's what it is. And that happens with Gabetto too, right? Like, Gabetto have 140 HP, but... So the difference between standard and elite, that HP boost and attack boost, for that matter, is increased by 10. And that applies to every unique unit. So it's the same with Kipchex. Kipchex getting more HP. So, the, you know, unique units would be like that for everybody, but you only get access to the unique unit if you are that Civ, which is unlike the other bonuses. Whoa. I want to see Mamelukes. Whoa! We found the king! We found the king! 1,123 HP and crazy attack. Plus, of course, you have the three range with Mamelukes. Oh my goodness. Gray casts a spell and says, I cast Lesser Betrayal. I think Gray is upset that there was an attack that came in. So Gray is going to turn on our base. Now, they're supposed to have been turned on each other anyways. But Gray didn't get the memo because he was trying to get 7 million gold. Um, Blue seems to be doing quite well. Red is about to be defeated. The HUDs probably can't believe it. And green, I, you know, I will say this. With red out of the picture, yellow's obviously in a great spot. Look how fast the Cav Archers produce. <laughs> Machine gun production. I guess that's the Britain Archer range production bonus. I guess that has to be it. <laughs> um, I like how green made... Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Orange is being wiped off the face of the earth. Our base is going to be defeated before HUDs is. Uh, okay, well, Gray's going to lose all these trebs. It, the funny thing is, if Gray were to fire twice right here, all of Blue's units die. But Gray hasn't done that yet. 
Archer range is going to go down, and red is gone. GG. Red is defeated. Okay. Okay. So big fight towards the middle. This is a king of the hill game. Everything is moving so fast. I went fast score, or fast speed, sorry, because I wanted the game to go faster, and then we got humans for the movement speed, and this is just so hard to follow. Red says, ouchie. I like it. Salutes in chat, please, for, for HUDs. It probably doesn't feel great to lose, the, you know, be the first person to lose, but it still is solid buildup, and it, it, it just kind of comes with the territory. Oh my god, Tarkins. What are they doing in here? Oh my god, look where they've found themselves! Dude! Look how many towers there are! There's a hundred towers in here! And I know it's easy to get stoned, but still... This is... <laughs> this is nuts! Okay, Tarkins, they do not give a crap about your tower fire, but do you see them take hit from that treb shot? And Green says, I cast Melt Base! These guys are having so much fun. I think Mamelukes are the new OP unit, though. I think Mamelukes match up so nicely against everything. The Camels, too, but, like, Mamelukes with, with having that range could be so strong. Our base is defending himself, guys. He stayed alive with Trebs. Look at that. This Treb here, does Capture Age tell me? Okay, apparently that Treb did absolutely nothing, but there should be a lot of damage dealt. Um, Tarkin's just going to go just passing yet again here. Don't open the gate. 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 He could just destroy the gate. Goodbye. What's the goal here, though? Like, what, what does... Okay, if you take out the towers, I guess that accomplishes something. That's a lot of cab archers back here from stealth. Now, I think if you have cab archers with your own Tarkins in front, that could be good. Range and, and then the meat shield. Zoom, 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 zoom. Well, fun times, guys. Let's look at the KD. Yellow has killed more units than anybody. And still, our base tries to hold, and Gray tosses away trebuchets like they don't cost resources because he has 7 million gold. Because the, the trebs will still cost full price. It's other units that should be discounted. I, is this the highest score you guys have ever seen in an Age of Empires game? I'm actually trying to think about this. The reason they're both sharing monument control right now, by the way, is because they have not allied everyone. Every single freaking game, I make it clear that you need to ally everyone after all the texts come in, and it never happens. But this is the only way we get these texts. Only way it plays out like this. So hopefully they realize... Mm. Blue says one gate didn't cut it, so let's make five, which is actually really satisfying to look at. And our base is held on. I think our base is probably the more skilled player between these two, which plays some part of it a role here. Um, and and you know you you produce so quickly, units are cheap, so as long as he just keeps at it. Theory, he should be able to stick around. Now, what both players need is they need Trebs to be, like, attack rounding the areas where the opponent's reinforcing. Like, watch this. Okay, so that... There he hit the castle, but if he's hitting next to the castle, those shots are worth it. Tarkins have changed the game, though. Uh, changed the fight, rather. And maybe our base is gone. It's crazy. It's like our base was winning the fight, and now he's just gonna be gone. Hmm. Making Hussars tells me he maybe doesn't have gold. Okay, he doesn't have a ton of gold. But still some gold. I guess he had no Fatoria this whole time. Green has broken through again. And continues to just funnel units right by purple in the middle. Like, he doesn't care at all. Just goes right past purple into Blue's base. Remember, Blue's the person who taught everyone the way here. With the market. And Gray says, wait, why do I have sensor? And that would be because you are not enemied to purple, and the game will show that. Wow, traffic jam. Don't you don't you hate rush hour these days? 
Man, I, <coughs> I swear, you didn't have to deal with this back in the day. Too many people in the, too many Mamelukes, too many camels in this planet. Blue. Might have pop space issues actually after losing the castles. Might be something difficult to realize. And our base has one final stable. Technically, our base could stay in this. But, um, you know, we'll see. Our base actually resigned. Okay. Salutes in chat for our base as well. Thanks for being the host. Thanks for letting us continue to see how high Gray is going to get his score. Oh, yeah, they have infinite pop because of Huns. That's true. I forgot. It's so funny how you forget, like, obvious details because you're so focused on some of the crazy stuff. At least I forget. Hmm. Well, I mean, Gray's going to come to the middle to try and stop purple at some point, and they're going to realize they're not fighting each other. I don't think there's any, like... I think they just got so caught up, obviously, they just don't realize it, so... Hmm. Wow, he did one shot a Mameluke. Maybe two shot. Again, my feeling is Mamelukes will be the, the, the superior unit this game. If you get to, yeah, 80 Mamelukes, I don't think you get stopped. There's no way. And you can run past them. That actually might be the technique, is you run past the Mamelukes in towards the castles, take out the castles. Yeah, that would be really good. Green seems to hate blue for some reason. Stealth R Us is laughing because yellow has run Tarkins all the way through. <laughs> That's actually the play, is just run past people with the Tarkins. Your units can just make it through. Gray is on the way with Trebs. Purple is now turned on Gray. Did Gray really make petards? <laughs> and now Purple allies Gray, maybe realizing that Gray was allied. And now declares war on the two players that are dead. Oh, God! Oh, God! Defense from Green. He's like, how do I defend against Tarkins? Trebs, baby. That was sick. Clip that one, share it around. That was cool, man. But how do you get the Trebs into open spaces? Okay, Purple's cleared out all of Gray's Trebs. Again, Gray is accidentally allied to Purple. Should be, like, should not be allied with anyone. What's the gold count? Still 7 million. I think Gray is done with the gold glitch. But I'm glad we have a video where we actually saw how insane it is. The problem is every time there's a patch, it breaks, um, it breaks all these mods. And they, sometimes, like, the original mod creator won't fix it. And so they, they, someone else makes a new one, and there's just like so many different versions. Always hard for me to know the up-to-date version. Uh, Gray really going to town here against Blue. Seems to be running in with Tarkins as well. Like, you don't see Gray's units, it's just random Tarkins taking forever to die. Oh my goodness, look at this. Guys, we're at 140 years though. Like, this is getting pretty dangerous, and Purple... I don't know if they've realized how good these Mamelukes are. I'm curious to see how this plays. I think really good Treb shots can kill anything with how good the Trebs are. So you need your military and your Trebs combined and you can take down purple. Actually, yellow just did what we said. You take out the castles, that means less Mameluke production. That's really good. Will these guys settle their differences and go towards the middle here? Tom seems to have no interest in attacking the middle. But when they hear the, the noise at 100 years, maybe they will make their move towards the mid. Or someone's got to be like, yo, guys, get with it. Can you break the wonder? No, the wonder can't be. The wonder can actually take damage. We've done it before. I don't know how, like, what causes it to take damage. When I remember the damage being taken for the wonder, what the? That's new. Uh, when I remember wonders losing HP, it was because there was an ex exploding king uh, that actually destroyed it in King of the Hill. But also another one was when uh, we had like the nukes on Nuketown. It would take like two HP off every explosion or something crazy. 
Yeah, green's trying to run in here to kill the castles. I assume. I assume. Uh, okay, it's not doing so, but interesting. It did distract. Yo, teamwork. Wow, that was sick. Look at that. And all purple's units are back here dealing with Tarkins. And now purple's out of the middle. Wow. I also really like the camel edition. So here's my question. How fast does a Mameluke produce? It's, it produces very slow compared to everything else. That's something I didn't think about with the Mameluke. Because the stable units produce so quickly, right? Hmm. Magyar Hussar has like 200 HP. Yeah, 240. Which is nothing compared to a 500 HP camel. And, and like the Cav Archers too, only 80 HP. I really think Cav Archers is just not it. Archers in general is not it. Guys, we are about to see someone lose. Who had 7 million gold in the bank. A town bell from this, the now 3 million gold player. And, and Blue's like, you picked on the wrong guy. Like, uh, you came towards the wrong player here. I showed you the way. I showed you how to do this. More castles from Greg. Greg will not give up. Greg uh, certainly has the resources. But the countdown is now below 100 years, and Green has it. Green, of course, has this nice little corridor to send units through. Teal has a nice corridor. Yellow has this. Ooh, organ guns for the first time. Organ guns could be interesting. I think this is going to be better than a Cav Archer. Certainly against Camel units. But it's so slow, dude. Ugh. It's so freaking slow. And what's to stop the Mamelukes from just getting on top of you and doing that? Yeah, get get out of here. <laughs> Don't make any more organ guns. They're too slow. But look, he just goes right back. A countdown reset there. It'll reset again here as well. Crazy game. And you can tell they don't really need eco because look at their military counts. 170, 170, 150. Wow! Gray is making all of his free kip checks. I assume that's how he's getting them. Like, wouldn't it have been like... Is it 50 per castle? It's fireworks, guys. It's the 4th of July. <laughs> I mean, you make enough of these things. Okay. This is a pretty competitive game, I gotta say. Ooh, Camel Archer for the first time. 400 HP, 17 plus 14 attack. That's really good, guys. And they regen. Watch the HP. I think it should go up pretty quickly. Um, it is going up occasionally. I guess the regen's not that insane. Okay, counts on resets again. It's just nonstop. Oh, Blue said kip checks. I see your kip checks and I raise you a cav archer, you fool. Uh, did I say a cav archer? I didn't say that, right? I meant to say Tarkin. Grace is not like this. I curse you with an itchy bleep, he says. Okay. All right. Gray. Gray is, is cursing his opponent. He says manual breathing. He continues to curse. Blue says that curse doesn't work on me because I already have that issue. Great comeback, honestly. But I think Gray realizes the writing is maybe on the wall here. Actually, are there any villagers around? Okay, there are some villagers in there somewhere. <laughs> this is ridiculous, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Everything is so fast. <laughs> it's so speedy. Because, again, we do random civ all the time. I, I don't think we've had humans before. And that speed is noticeable here. There's so much HP on the Tarkins. And actually, the Gabetto are taking out the castles right now. That's that's the play for them. Interesting strategy. Uh, a couple shoutouts here. Thank you, Lord Gloom. Thank you, Jelinska. Thank you, Worst Case Scenario. 
Eliminated, thanks for the two months. Thank you, Swanky, Swanky Hango. He says, thanks for all the great content. You're welcome. Thanks for the sub, man. Thank you, uh, A6 for the 20 months as well. Gray resigns. Ends the game with 3 million gold. Had 7 million at one point. And loses, but... Salutes in chat for Gray because Gray was a very entertaining character. But that means Blue is going to join this craziness in the middle. Green seems really upset that Tom is out of the game, though. Might take Green some time to get over that. You know what we haven't seen people try? Infantry. You know what is probably really, really bad? Infantry. <laughs> uh, they would be very slow... They would have extra pierce armor, but I don't think the extra pierce armor would do too much. I wonder continues to reset here. Oh, I really think green might win this game because green recognizes the power of doing this. Green's the only one who's been doing this. He just runs into the opponent's eco real fast and nukes their buildings with Tarkins. Look at this. It's so smart. This is the way to do it, man. This is perfect. And then the opponent can't produce, right? So you, you essentially, you don't beat their army, you outproduce them. God, imagine the thumps we would have if this was classic Age of Empires as well. Now I know people are going to say, well, T90, there is a Tarkin thump mod. So you can add the sound of the Tarkin back with the, with the separate mod. But I, I, I want the real thing, you know? I want the real thing. I want, I want it to actually happen. Now, Green, you've got to be careful. Green says GG, Yellow. Don't don't be that guy. Yellow's still got Vils. Yellow could still make a Fatoria. Oh, they probably all have Spies, and I just realized that. Ah, yes. Okay, they probably have Spies because of Spies being so cheap when you can get infinite gold. Now, they do they all have it? Yellow doesn't, but Green did. Did blue get it? I'll check. So actually, all the vills were just sniped, and now it might be GG for yellow with the next wave. Yeah, blue is spies as well. I, I, I forgot about that possibility. Makes sense. It spies is 200 gold per villager. Yeah, these are just Tarkins here. There haven't been many vills for a while, and obviously they could get tons of gold with the relic hack, so... All right, if you had to pick a winner right now, who would you pick of the five remaining guys? I think there's some strong candidates. I think Blue is a strong candidate. He's actually going to cut through to Purple. Purple's a strong candidate if Purple doesn't get hit by Blue. Green's a great candidate for this. Yellow's obviously out. Teal as well could, could definitely do this. I worry for Teal because Teal's making a lot of Cav Archers, and the Camel Archer just outclasses them in every single way. So Stealth RS is going to need more Tarkins. Kind of hurts that the Magyars can't make camels too. I I would say blue or green personally. The like blue seems to realize maybe because green did it to him that this is the strat. Is you just go in and you take out all their castles. This is so great. Oh, TLG. Thank you for the dono. Who, TOG was selected for a game for this game and couldn't play because his an Xbox player says, can Xbox players even play custom maps and mods? Feels bad, man. To my knowledge, they can play all the standard maps in the game, but they can't play custom mods and they can't play custom maps, at least with PC players. Like, you might be able to play certain mods and maps. Keep in mind, I don't really play on Xbox. If you're combining with other people from the Xbox. So Purple's lost his entire base, but he could still produce and get enough HP to the middle to maybe win this. 28 years, but this is Purple's last stand, guys. This is everything. Blue is taking out the base. Uh, this could be a really close call. There's a lot of HP from Purple in here. There's 80,000 HP in here from Purple. I can't quite see all of it, but the Mamelukes are bringing 75,000 HP themselves. 18 years. 18 years. They need more military. Where's the Tarkins? Maybe Tarkins are bad against the Mamelukes. The Mamelukes, there's still 74 of them. There's 73 of them. There's 72 of them. Purple might win it. 
Purple doesn't have a base. Purple doesn't have a base anymore. Purple might win it with the Mamelukes. Purple will win it with the Mamelukes. Where's the Trebs? They go. Oh, no way, dude. Green, 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 green. Go, go. Green, please, please. Deploy them. Deploy them. Green. Teal, stop killing them. No. Stealtharus is killing their only chance. Three years. Trebs. Trebs. No! Ah, that's so tricky, right? Because your units auto attack because you're all enemied. If green could have been there a little bit faster with the trebs, maybe the trebs could have actually cleared out purple there. Purple still had tons of HP in the middle, right? Like it was the Mameluke in the end that won him the game. Still 60k HP on 60 Mamelukes. But uh, it was a close game. It was a close game. We got to see a lot of cool things, and we got to have some fun, which is, which is of course, always the idea. Props to Blue for how cool the base looked. But, um, yeah, fun game. Listen, in most of these games, it's like Scorpions are strong, or, like, Siege in general is very strong, or ranged units. Ranged units, I guess, Siege being ranged units. This is one of the rare ones where it felt like ranged units weren't actually that strong. The Tarkin was really good. And then the Mameluke was strong as well. Also, camels were were great in there in the mix. Um, but yeah, we saw very little infantry. I thought it was great though how we we got to see someone hit seven million gold. Is that reflected here? It's probably not, right? Yeah. Okay. So this this is the gold that was. Actually, I'm really confused on what this actually means because they didn't actually mine gold. So how does the game show 37k gold? Maybe it only shows what it would naturally be with all the market clicks. It's weird to me. I, I don't I can't explain why this doesn't have the same gold count that Capture Age showed us. Oh, 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 yeah. Fatorias. Thank you guys. That's obvious. Yeah. Yeah. This is probably all the resource the gold brought in from Fatorias from the players. That makes sense. Because, you know, if it were to show market, it would show something very different there. You know what would be funny to me is if Blue's APM was higher before he had any military because of the market. That's what it is. Guys, That you know that's what it is, right? If you watch this game, you know that Blue did it early and was spamming the market hotkeys. And then Gray did the same thing later on to get to 7 million gold. Peaking at a total APM of 1,287 actions per minute, meaning that Gray was jumping on those keys. My goodness. Wow, what a what a spike. Over 1,000? Is that... That's a new record. I've never seen that. And that's not APM. That's effective actions per minute. Those are things that he's doing in the game, but that is market hockeys. He's literally just bam, 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 Apparently, the peak was 1,400, so. Uh, so he beat out blue there, but yeah. Um, that is why, I guess, like, there's a risk. I mean, there's also the risk that we get Mayans, and Mayan resources last 10% longer, and the game goes on a very long time, which we've run into before, so. Um, you know. We never know what we're going to get with these. It's been a long time since we've done this. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, again, the goal is to be silly. The goal is to have fun. It... it to encounter different styles and different strats. We had that here. And for the foreseeable future, I'm just going to continue to do 10 times shared sieve bonus with random sieves because I think random sieves, while the temptation is there to maybe stack the sieves to do like the craziest thing, I like the fact that we have this, this period of figuring it out. Um, and I just don't want this to become, you know, boring too quickly. Um, if I show you the craziest thing that's possible, if I lab it up, it might ruin all future games where it's not the craziest thing possible to, to some degree. So we'll see. It was good stuff. Obviously, if you enjoyed it on YouTube, leave a comment, leave a like, but, uh, yeah, here on the stream, we had a great time. Um, blue certainly showed us, but also I think blue deserves an extra set of salutes because blue told everybody how he was getting to that. Uh, high of resources, right? Like, Blue didn't have to tell anybody. 
We have seen people who are better players or who know tricks not share them many times and then just look like or feel like they look like a god. And then, you know, we're sitting here like, well, this is a stupid game now. So he actually made this more of a game because he shared the intel. And I appreciate that. Blackpoint001 says, T90, smashing your your keyboard doesn't require skill, winky face. Well, that might be true. But not smashing your keyboard means you're down here with everybody else. And at the end of the video, you just look slow compared to gray and blue. So do with that what you will. <laughs> They had their market hotkeys, and I'm sure there's a part of them that feels very good looking at how high they peaked, even though they died. 